Question for y'all. Okay. All right, no. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm so glad y'all like to come close to me. Yeah, okay, sit down for me, okay, honey? There you go, good. Sit down, Tyson. So, children. There you are. <laughs> You're so sweet. How do y'all express yourself? So, show me your expressions you would make if you just got an A on a test you really studied for. What would you do? Yay! What would you do if your mom brought your favorite dessert home for you? How would you? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, yeah. No. Say thank you too. Watch this. How would you express yourself if you won the football game? Yay! Gatorade. Gatorade. I would. I. I. I would play. Play a game of football. Really Here's the next question. How do you express faith? Praying? Praising, that's a good answer. Reading the Bible? Excuse me? Forgiving? Those are all very good attributes. So I want to share with you my life verse. And over the next few months, this is going to become very much. And then there's shirts I'm having printed up for our journey in faith. And hope everybody wants one. 
But look at, this is my life verse. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Hmm. You see, I could tell people I have faith, but when I treat them with love, it shows them I have faith. Jesus said, how can you say you love your Father in heaven when you don't love those on earth that you can see? You see, one thing that we can do is show people we have faith in Jesus Christ daily by loving people and caring for them. Everywhere Jesus went, he cared for the people he met. He cared for them in meeting their needs and he cared for them by preaching the gospel, repentance, belief, and eternal life. So how many of us can improve on expressing their faith through love? Mm. That's right. Because sometimes we have stressful situations. And under stressful situations, our flesh can express itself in ways that aren't quite appropriate. Everybody say, right. And we can always sit back and say, that's not the person I want to be in Jesus. I need to express myself a little better by love. So let's all stand and read God's word together. Evangelina's gonna lead us. We're right up here. Let's all stand to honor the word of God. There you go, stand on up. You can do it. Got it. There you go. The only thing that that counts counts is faith. faith. Expressing Expressing itself itself through through love. love. Galatians 5, 6. 6. Another way to express our faith and love for God is to learn his word. And this morning we have somebody that's going to share, you may be seated, how they learn the books of the New Testament. Evangelina, if you would. Everybody else, let's sit back down. Yes. So we have Aidan Odom who have learned the books of the New Testament and uh, he will share with us. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelations. (laughs) That was really good. All right, children, go have a great time. Yes, I need my Bible. I often misplace it. Right that way. If you would, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Before Stanley starts, I want to tell you where we left off. Jesus had went out preaching repentance in the gospel. I want you to take note in Mark, when Jesus preached repentance in the gospel, he didn't have a lot of um, excitement around that. People, their flesh got involved. But then he went, and we last two weeks ago when I preached, he had a miraculous healing casting out an unclean spirit. Every time Jesus did the miraculous, his fame spread. Note, when he preached repentance, people didn't get so excited. But now watch how Jesus expressed his love everywhere he went. Mark 1, 29 through 39. It says, now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. 
and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick and ver with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, before, because for that, this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Oh, Father, help us to learn from the life of Christ. Help us to see his love and determination. Help us to see his journey of faith. Help us in our journey of faith that we can be like Christ. And I ask this, Jesus, in your precious name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Stanley. You know, and I, and I sit and I look at the verses and I see Jesus preaching. Repentance. The kingdom of God is at hand. Believe. And like I said, I don't see the excitement, the fame spreading. I can preach a message of my personal experiences with unclean spirits and seeing them cast out. And we get excited and we should. But I preach with the same authority God's word on repentance and calling sin sinfulness. And that's usually when I get people a little upset with me. And it's okay because that is what Jesus experienced. But he lived daily with love and he continuously preached for eternity and eternal life. I ask you, if we lead a ministry where we just daily love people, but don't share the gospel for eternity, are we achieving anything of eternal value? And I say no. But if we only preach the gospel of eternity, but don't accompany it with love, are we achieving much? And I say no. And the Lord is working on my life to be balanced. Be balanced. That daily walk of love. A daily walk when the stresses of the world come upon you. Balanced with eternal thoughts, preaching. And that is what we see in the life of Jesus Christ. So all of a sudden he was there preaching a cleansing of the unclean spirit. Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon, verse 29, and Andrew with James and John. He's preaching, he's teaching, he's casting, and he comes in to rest. A balanced life. And he goes in there, and I continually want to remind you of the verse, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love, faith expressing itself through love. And, and, and that verse, we have to look at Jesus and see, you see all the outward signs of religion can be faked. And the Antichrist will be the biggest faker the world's ever known. But what won't be faked, counterfeited, is a life of love. You see, that's what I was looking for when I came to Christ. I wasn't looking for somebody to judge me harshly. I've already done that to myself. But I came into a church that showed me love acceptance and preach the gospel and it saved my soul. But a church that was, had enough courage to call me out on my bad habits so I would see the scriptures and want to improve. I had a church that was balanced. Love, faith, the word of God. And he came into the house, verse 30, but Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever. And they told him 
about her at once. You see, everywhere Jesus went, he restored people. When Jesus came into my life, he restored me to, to direction, purpose, and, 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 and a place of right standing with God, that even my prayers went into heaven now. My Lord, my restorer. Jesus just left and he found the man with the unclean spirit and he cast it out and he restored him. I didn't create you. For in Christ all things were created and without him nothing was created. And he created this man not to have an unclean spirit but to have a spirit that communed with God Almighty. And he restored him to a right relationship. And he came into the house and he met a lady who's sick in bed. She was not created to be sick in bed. At that time, she was created to get up and serve Jesus Christ. And he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her. And she served him. There's a whole sermon on what will you do with your healing. But a greater sermon is Jesus Christ showed love everywhere he went. How does she need love? A touch of the master. Get up. Two weeks ago I told you I was leaving and was gonna go see my mom who, who lays at that point very sick. And hospice came in and she wasn't responding and they evaluate and they grade you and then they give a life expectancy and, and for anybody who know I'm a mama's boy. Period. I remember all the days in the nursing home before any church would let me preach. And there were reasons for that, I tell you, but I would go sing at the nursing home with Mama and Shelly. One man came up to me after service. He says, man, you got a great heart, but you can't sing. <laughs> so that's when I decided if I was going to sing, I'd sing loud to show my heart. And I went to Florida apprehensive about what I would see and not wanting to see what I was going to see. I'm laying in bed and she's not responding anymore. She's not smiling. Mama always smiled. And I thought all the way down there, what am I going to do? I was told to take Tyson to Shelley's parents. That's not a good place for him at this point. I said, okay, I'll take her. I did that. And I got beside my mama. Some of y'all saw the picture. Kissed her on the cheek and said her favorite boy's home. And she smiled. The Lord put it on my heart. What you do have is love. And you go there and you express it by your actions. You see, the whole Florida trip was all about actions, expressing love. You see, when the crisis comes, we're going to be challenged to how we express ourselves. And I pray through the power of Jesus Christ, we'll raise up to the level that Christ lived and express it through love. I said in the morning, my stepdad gets up about 4.30. I'll get up with him. And he would cry a little bit and he would talk a little bit and he's not one that weeps easily and I knew I could tell he was under such pressure. After two or three days there, I saw that release. And I praise God. You see, not only can we express love to one who is ill, we can express love to others who are under stress. And that's a life worth living. Anybody say amen? It's not about me. It's about how I leave others. And then I was challenged a little deeper. And at first I didn't respond so well. Talking to Shelly, she says, Oh, by the way, I want the laundry mat, I mean room to be moved in the house. And here I'm thinking, oh, I got up I'm tired I've been working for six months on this house or four months or 
And the Lord put in my heart, you didn't show your life lo- love. I called Shelly back. I said, you know, Shelly, where you want the new laundry room is right behind the kitchen. And the wall is the same wall that has the water to the sink. When I come home, we'll open that wall up and move your laundry room. And that's what we did Friday. How is it that I could show love to my mama, but not show love to my wife? Any men, you ever have any problems like me? No, just me? Raise your hands. Talk is cheap in the world we live in, but actions show the heart. And Jesus touched her and restored her. And I'm telling you, every one of us can work on restoring our relationships to be the utmost for his glory by love. He lifted her up. I wonder how many lives we can lift up by encouragement and love. And the fever left him to sit and watch. I watched my stepfather. I watched him speak to me. I watched him really overstressed for too long. I don't don't particularly like getting up at 4.30 in the morning. But if you've ever stayed at my stepfather's house, you're going to. But one thing I did love is watching him de-stress and say thank you for coming to see your mama. Express your love, Jesus did. Everywhere he went, I left Florida 100% healthier than I went there, emotionally. Anybody say amen? Because I could go and do my best. And at evening, Verse 32, when the sun set, they brought to him all who were sick. You see, Jesus is in the house and now in a 24-hour period, people are flocking to Jesus because he had miraculous healings. And now all of a sudden, another one, hey, you should have seen the fever leave her. Jesus touched her. She's serving him. But all throughout the community, the fame went out. And the Bible says they brought to him... (coughs) all who were sick and all who were demon possessed and God created everyone for a purpose and the whole city gathered at the door see Jesus knew who he was and he had the ability to make a difference in lives and the whole city gathered at the door and he healed many who were sick and various diseases and cast out many demons and did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him A verse that the Lord brought into my heart deeply was 1 Corinthians 9, 14. Even so the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from it. Live from the gospel. If you're going to preach the gospel eternity, live it, live it, live it. Be balanced. The gospel is God's expression of love for eternity through his son. But it's also God's way to express to us daily, hey, live faith. We we have to teach the young generation and we have to reach them because they're hearing the words of faith, but the, the devil's gonna take away a connection. The connection is this. I have faith in Jesus Christ for eternity, but I don't have the living faith that living his way is the very best life. You see, what they're hearing from many avenues, we have to be careful. Yes, you can have eternal life, but you don't have to live God's way at the same time. Have it your way. But when I read the scriptures, the way that I express my faith is by life expressing love to God by obedience. He who loves me is he who does my commandments, my word. And you see, (laughs) walking in God's favor more than I ever imagined is not because of me or my giftedness or my abilities. Wait till you hear my singing in a little bit. It'll be my first and last solo you ever hear. 
It's because I was taught by my church to connect the life of balance of trusting God's word for eternity and trusting God's word for everyday life and then adjust your life and live by it according to his word and then you trust God for the outcome. And if you love God, show it. You know, to speak love is so easy. I think it's the most misused word in the world. Show love. Show love. Oh, when I get off the phone and the Lord says, did you show your life, wife love? You know she wants to be able to have the laundry room without going in the rain. And you know you can do this. I said, oh Lord, I'll make that call. I was right. No, you're right, I'm wrong. I don't want to talk about it. But we're going to fix this. I wonder how many of our lives would be better off if we would listen to God when he says, did you show love? Maybe you need to call your spouse, your family member, your child back up and say, you know what? I can do better. I, I told you I loved you, but I didn't respond in a loving way. And, and I'm not so big and mighty, I can't admit my fault and do better. How many Christians says that's me? I don't always respond under stress like I want to. But God has an amazing way to give me a reevaluation when I meditate and think and allow him to be Lord and then I can repent and do what's better, a life that honors God. And many were healed Everywhere Jesus went, lives were touched. There's a goal. Lord, may I go, and wherever I go, may I touch lives. So I thought about every home in this area, knock. And if you've never done that, it's very interesting. Sometimes their dog is the first thing you meet and he chases you. And I always bring a deacon I can outrun for obvious reasons. Here, pet the dog. I've had people come out, chase me off their property. But one thing I can do is before I even go to that property, pray over it. And pray for them. If anything else I do today, I can pray over them in this home that Jesus Christ would reside there and they would be blessed. I would pray they would know Christ and know God's favor like I've known. I would pray I can be a servant. I can pray when I go up, I'll be kind and invite them to church and share the gospel. You see, there's so many things I can't do, but knowing what I can do is what I will do with God's help. Pouring out your life. Jesus poured out his life in the next verse we must take in. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight. He went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. I've learned in my life, when I pour out, I gotta find a solitary place to pray. The Lord speaks to me the most when I get solitary and I get away from the world and I pray. Jesus taught us to be refilled. If your life is being poured out, it's only a matter of time until you're going to crash and you'll start making mistakes, spiritual mistakes. There is a reason Christians 
crash and burn in their walk of faith, in their journey. One of the reasons is they get burnt down and beat down and they get tired. Wives, how many of your husbands get more irritable when they're tired? Not even my wife raised her hand, goodness. When I get tired, we're not at our best. When we get tired, we're not gonna be at our best faith life and journey. And Jesus went to a solitary place and he prayed. They came to him and says, everyone is looking for you. Don't be so busy that you lose your private time with God. And when you pray, seek God's face. If anything I've learned of great value in my prayer life is seek God's face. And I've told you, and I use this verse a lot, but I I imagine myself when I seek his face, when I sit down, and you see the little children come to me? I love that. Don't ever worry when a little child comes to you. They were seeking my face. They weren't looking at my hands to see if I had candy to give them. They were seeking my face, looking at my expressions. And I look at their face and I can know them. One of the reasons I have children's message because I love the children and I want to know them. I want them close where I can see them face to face and be able to tell them about my Lord. And I think about that when I pray. Oh, oh, (laughs) I wish I could go right now and sit on the lap of God Almighty as his little child and say, oh Lord, I just want to see you. What do you want, Daryl? You. What's your prayer request to see your face? I just want to experience you, God. What would happen in our prayer life if we start imagining our lives sitting in God's lap and looking at his face and say, I I don't want to ask you for all the things that you already know I need. You already know my burdens. God, you already know my needs. You even know my heart's desires, Psalms 37. But God, I pray because I just want to know you. I pray because I want to spend time with you, God. I want to experience you, God. In my journey of faith, I want you. Speak to me, God. Teach me, God. Touch me, Lord. And God says, seek his face. And I could just imagine Jesus going a little further than the rest, like the Garden of Gethsemane, and and seeking God's face, praying, asking for direction. He poured out his life. When they found him, and they said, everyone's looking for you. But he said to them, let's go into the next town. See, it's amazing he could have stayed there and made it his hometown and been an amazing healer because that's what they were seeking. But Jesus knew his purpose that I may preach there also. Wherever God went, he touched lives 
we see healings, we see feeding, but we always see the gospel. You see, Jesus went there to restore them for their purpose. You see, my purpose in life goes much longer than 70, 80, or 90 years. My purpose is to worship God for eternity. I was created to worship God forever, and so were you. Your purpose goes long beyond your lifespan. If we're just seeking his face for the current day needs, we've missed the big picture. You were created for eternity. And death can't take that from you in Jesus Christ. And that's why everywhere Jesus went, he preached, time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent. It's not popular preaching repentance. I've got so many people mad at me over 20 plus years of preaching, preaching on sin and repentance. One time I preached on sin, a sexual nature. A young man got mad at me and I didn't see him for two years. Two years later, he came to me and came to church. He said, preacher, I've been so mad at you. So mad. It's okay. What'd I do? You preached on appropriate sexuality, and I'm not going to tell you particulars. I said, okay. But I'm here to tell you I was wrong, and I'm sorry I've been mad at you, and you are right, and I repented. And I brought my area of sexuality into God's will. He didn't use those words. He used more direct. And he hugged me. And he thanked me. The balance of life. Somehow that young man knew I loved him. Even though he was mad at me. And he knew I loved him enough to tell him the truth, even though the consequences would come. But if I just pleased him in church and didn't set him up for eternity, I don't think that's love at all. What true love is to be restored to the person God created you to be, one in a right standing with God Almighty with a right mind and one with a righteousness for all eternity in Jesus Christ. That's my Jesus. You see, the way I can love people is express it through love. I love you when I preach the gospel. I love you when I preach on your sin. I love you when I visit you. And then I came into this paradox. Go ahead and get the video ready and wait for my cue. But then God, how do we love people when we don't know what to do? How do we love people when our hearts are broken And we're not sure how this is going to go. I got to Florida and I said, how can I love mom when she doesn't even know me anymore? And she's sick. And then this happened. It's the only way I knew to love. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so 
little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Oh, that's the good stuff, Mama. We love you. Yeah. That's my mama. That was one of the best days ever. Can anybody say amen? My stepfather says, sing to her, Daryl. Oh, I know a song. I've been preparing for this for the last 20 years every Sunday night. What I'm saying is, if we have faith, let's just not say we love people. Let's show them. Let's grab them by the hand and show them. That's the good stuff, Mama. That's the good stuff. What if we left every person we meet with the good stuff from now on. Love. Don't look at that video and be sad. Look at that video and say, that's love. Somehow mama engaged in that song and I think she knew her boy just for a little bit. I'm asking you, are you expressing love? I want it first to start with your family. Express love. Do a little extra. And then say, that's the good stuff. Then I want you to go our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and express love. Love God, love others. Are you showing God love? We do this through obedience. The first step of obedience is to turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. To believe in your heart, confess through your mouth that Jesus is Lord. The next step is to walk with him and love him every day of your life. But I'm telling you, life goes by fast. Don't let another day go by without the good stuff. I'm here to pray with you. You might need a church home. We're right here to receive you. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, it all starts right there.